I asked you to read about value of a statistical life. Right now, we place the value of a st statistical life in the U.S. at about $10 million. Um, this value has been increasing um, as we become wealthier. We, are, we value our lives at a higher dollar amount. Um, you might ask, well, you know, how are we able to determine how much we value our lives? Well, um, we'll talk about this a little bit later, but um, it's how we, um, you know, measures we're willing to take to save our lives, um, what we're willing to uh, risk to um, when we put our lives at risk, you know, what, what are we willing to uh, receive in return for risking our life? Um, but uh, they put the value of life a lot higher than y'all did, um, or at least what y'all are willing to spend to save your own skin. Um, there's also a lot of trade-offs between quality and quantity of life. Uh, like, for example, why aren't seats backwards in cars? It's much, much, much safer to ride backwards in a car. Now, obviously, the driver can't do that, but the passenger could. Uh, passenger side, the back seat uh, could be backwards. That's why infant car seats are backwards. Um, well, why don't we do that? Well, because people don't like it. It's not comfortable. Uh, you get a little nauseous when you're riding backwards. You can't see anything. Uh, you can't see where you're going when you're driving backwards. People just don't like it. And so we make these trade-offs between things that make our life better, things that make our life worse. Um, my dad drove motorcycles, um, and that's 25 times more likely to kill you than riding in a car, but it's also more fun. So we make these trade-offs all the time about um, things that make our life better versus um, things that will help us live longer. Uh, we talked a little bit about diet and exercise in the survey. Uh, most of y'all were not willing to give up sugar or meat. Um, uh, I think I should exercise more than I do, but I don't um, because I have other things that I want to do with my time. Um, so again, there's this trade-off between quality and quantity of life. Um, there's also a trade-off between liberty and life. Uh, I included this quote from Ben Franklin because I thought it was appropriate here. Those who would give up essential liberty to purchase a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor safety. Well, we do this all the time. We uh, trade, uh, we make a trade-off between liberty versus life. Um, we have laws that require people to wear seat belts and helmets. Um, uh, mandatory vaccinations. We don't make it necessarily mandatory here, um, although it's mostly mandatory to get into school, although there's exceptions there. Um, that's an invasion of liberty if we make these vaccinations uh, mandatory. But will it save lives if we do that? Well, absolutely. Um, so we're making that trade-off between liberty and life. Um, again, I put the mandatory quarantine on here because if we're telling people they can't leave their homes, can't go to a uh, a live religious service, can't do all of these things, um, that's an attack on liberty. But it'll also save lots of lives. So where do we put ourselves there? Um, to what extent are we willing to sacrifice liberty for life? Um, the Patriot Act. Um, a lot of people support the Patriot Act. It gives the government lots of power to uh, suspend uh, lots of essential liberties, constitutional liberties, y'all. Um, you know, getting searched at the airport, um, all of this stuff, um, trying to save lives. We haven't had that many deaths from terrorism other than 9-11. Um, every year we've had like 30 deaths uh, or so from, uh, uh, from terrorism. Um, but lots of places are willing to have that. Other places... There's lots of government surveillance. There's um, cameras on the street everywhere um, collecting information, uh, which probably helps reduce crime. Um, but are we willing to sacrifice liberty for life? I'm not trying to answer these questions for you. Just saying these are trade-offs that economists discuss. Um, First Amendment stuff, depictions of suicide in media, um, 
uh, what is it, 13 Reasons Why, uh, that comes out, boom, huge spike in suicides. Um, so we could reduce deaths by um, censoring that sort of media. Uh, are we willing to do that? Is the, is the cost worth it for us? Um, guns. Um, when we talk about gun control, there's kind of two big things that we talk about. First of all, is it effective? I'm not going to talk about that. But the second is the idea of the right to bear arms. Um, and a lot of folks will say, well, I'm willing to, um, you know, I'm willing to sacrifice that to save lives. And other people are saying, no, I'm not willing to sacrifice that to save lives. Okay. Because uh, because these freedoms are important. Um, so again, there's these all these trade-offs. Something else I wanted to mention is how this plays into the cost of uh, healthcare. Let me reduce this or move this a little bit over. There we go. Um, so uh, because life is so valuable, um, demand for life-saving healthcare is almost perfectly inelastic, which if you forgot all of that, basically that means we are going to pay what it takes to stay alive. Even if they raise the price, we're still going to buy it. If they multiply the price by 10, we're still going to buy it. If you look at the, the cost of insulin, you'll see, you know, we're willing to pay just about anything to, to save our own lives until we bankrupt ourselves. Um, as you would imagine, this drives up the cost of healthcare, um, and especially when we're not sure how much something's going to help or not. Um, if we don't know if one one thing's better than another, we're going to pick the most expensive thing because we think it's better, um, and uh, it's worth it to us because we want to make sure we're getting the best the best care for ourselves. Um, so that's a big challenge when it comes to free market healthcare. That's one of the reasons why a lot of countries um, choose to use other systems um, because the amount that we're willing to pay is, is infinite. Um, so it's a really good profit opportunity. Um, I also wanted to mention there's a trade-off between our own lives and others' lives. Um, we're able to do things every day to uh, help other people and and um, um, save the lives of others, but we're not always willing to do that. Um, we're not always willing to take a homeless person into our house. Um, we're not always willing um, to spend our free time um, working to build houses for others. All these things that uh, we could do, money that we could spend, um, money that we could pay in taxes um, that could potentially save lives. Um, but, you know, we talked about how we assume that people are working in their own self-interest. Um, it's not that we don't care about other people, but at the end of the day, we generally care about ourselves more. Although, I was very impressed about how much you cared about your parents and your economics teacher. Um, but... Um, Anyhow, um, so we don't always we're not, we aren't always willing to make that trade off. Um, it gets really complicated when we talk about uh, how much we value U.S. lives versus foreign lives. A lot of people are very opposed to foreign aid. Uh, we talked about this a little bit before. Um, whether we're willing to. Um, spend money to save the lives of non-Americans versus saving the lives of Americans. Um, it's a lot cheaper to save the lives of non-Americans, but, you know, we are Americans. You know, we kind of want to save uh, our own lives, our own people. Um, and so this is very controversial. Also, um, saving the lives of military personnel versus uh, foreign civilians. Um, drone strikes have been become very controversial because they, you know, they're very expensive, but they don't cost any U.S. lives because un unless we accidentally um, strike ourselves, um, no U.S. casualties, no um, soldier casualties at all. That's awesome. 
but it's also harder to prevent civilian casualties when you're doing um, lots of bombings because um, you don't know um, if there's a civilian presence there because you don't have necessarily um, all of the information. Um, so it's this trade-off between uh, the lives of our soldiers and the lives of foreign civilians. I wanted to talk a little bit about risk. Um, so one of the ways that this plays into um, plays into your life personally is the risks that you're willing to take. Um, I know it seems weird to put a price on your life, but we take risks all the time with our own life. And we ask, okay, well, what's the payoff for this? What are we getting in return for risking our lives? Um, some people choose risky professions. Um, some people decide not to buy health insurance because it saves them money. Um, some people, first of all, we ride around in cars. That's, uh, uh, that puts our lives at risk. There's also motorcycles. Um, ton of fun, ton of fun. 25 times larger chance of death per mile. Um, you know, that's, that's significant. Um, but also economists have discovered that we are really bad at figuring out what the risks of things are. We make some, some lousy decisions sometimes. For example, um, most uh, responsible gun owners do a good job of locking up their guns so that kids don't have access, but we don't do a great job of um, making sure kids can't get in the pool. Um, and the pools are much more likely uh, to kill a child than the, uh, the McGun is. Um, it's a, it's a much higher risk. Real quick, I want to talk about how economists sometimes use risk uh, to calculate what how we value our own lives. So in your statistics class, you might have learned about something called expected value, um, where you take the value multiplied by the probability, and that gets what our expected value is. And so what they do is they basically do this calculation. They do the value that you're gaining from risking your life times the probability of death. And they're saying, well, if you choose to do that, then that value must be higher than the value of your life. Now, that's not great because we suck at risk, you know, but this is one of the ways that uh, economists do this. So I hope this was uh, informative. And I hope that um, you, uh, you learned a lot about how economists deal with matters of life and death. Thanks, guys.